In this video, I found on witsuckmafia.com, you're going to hear uh, John Gotti Jr. talking about the Witsuck Mafia project that he's been working on for a few years now. But in this clip specifically, he speaks on John A. Light and John A. Light's handlers and basically the corruption of the witness protection program and how it's no good and how they're basically catering to uh, murderers and basically criminals, how the FBI handlers are catering to these informants and criminals and allowing them to just lie and get away with the, whatever they want because they're helping them convict other people by using their testimonies. So watch this clip. Let me know what you guys think. In the case of John A. Light, who for the most part, man on man, was a coward. Always a coward. He was a hide in the bush kind of guy. He cried in front of the judge and says, I only pulled the trigger one time, Your Honor. He cried at his sentencing. And, but I had knowledge of three or four of the murders. And she gave him a great deal. She gave him a great deal. They, the U.S. attorney in Florida wanted him to have 17 years. New York, believe it or not, argued to get him down as low as possible. She gave him a 10-year deal. 120 months, he cried, was removed from the court, and then they came back several months later, resold him one more time, they repackaged him. After we punished him and sent him chasing, they never used him again. He was caught in so many lies in my case, they never used him again, ever. He was retired, this guy, but yet they repackaged and says, lied to the judge and says, Susan Buck Lewin said, we got, we achieved four more convictions as a result of the information that John Aylett has given us. Can you take more time off? And she did. She further cut his sentence. He was released out to the public. And here's a guy that now, the speaking engagements, you know what he says? I was involved in 15 murders. He did 15 murders. Another speaking engagement, dozens of people. I killed dozens of people. The embellishments get greater and greater and greater and greater because why? Because he was given absolution. The FBI, his handler, his handlers had given him absolution. So now he's emboldened. So now the reality of what you represented to that judge is no longer the reality. The truth now is what you're saying. You know, I'm not a humble guy. I'm not thankful for the second shot of being released. For the most part, almost the entire jury didn't believe the star witness. He wasn't credible at all. My case, the jurors were void there after the case was over. The 10 that stuck around, that stood around all said the reason why the ones that wanted to convict me said the reason why we couldn't convict them because we didn't believe John A. Light was our witness. And they all said, the 10 that stood around to answer questions, we had a problem. We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't hold on because of John A. Light, but we did believe in Mikey Scars DiLonardo. We did believe Dominic Ciccali, but A. Light we did not believe. All 10 that stood there in that room to be voir dire all said that he was so unbelievable, he was ridiculous. He pulled a script right out of Sammy Gravano's book, right on down to being on the stand and saying that, I have no intention of writing a book on the oath. said, I'm not going to write a book. When the whole time we had him on tape writing the book, okay? And the same thing. He followed his lead. Only the difference is that Sammy Gravano was a somebody. He was everything that he said he was. John A. Light was a gutter rat mutt. Now you get a shot, you're home. You're released. And rather than going to take care of your children, take care of your family, you're out breaking laws, Welfare fraud, construction fraud, terrorizing people on the internet, and trying to market yourself as a motivational speaker when you're abusing. We've had information that was sent to us uh, of abusing his own children, his own son. I mean, just the guy's just, he's a, he's a horrible excuse of a person. I received messages from my office, voicemails, and for example, his mother had step, came forward and contacted my office to talk to me. His mother. Uh, his older brother, his only brother, contacted my office to talk to me. His son, his eldest son, contacted my office to talk to me. Now that must tell you how bad of an individual this must be. If those peoples, your mother, your only brother, your eldest son, contact me to give me information and talk to me about you, the subject matter, how bad of a person are you really? I mean, it's... And he is, a, he's one of the worst I've ever seen. He's one of the worst individuals I've ever come across in my life. If people were to ask me if I have an ax to grind, I do, I do. Because he's, he was facilitated by certain individuals and sold a lie. 
His handler from the 90s, name is Dave Gentile, helped give he gave him, provided him with a vehicle to get to certain media personalities to market a story of total untruths. He sat there and lie after lie after lie. Brazilian stories about gladiator fights that we, now, the media personalities, uh, the person who had written his book, George Anastasia, he could have very easily did what I did. He says in his book that I couldn't check out the stuff that happened in Brazil. Well, I did. It cost me $7,000. I hired a lawyer and a private investigator in Brazil. They found me hundreds and hundreds of pages of files. They found me the guard that punched daylight in the mountain, knocked his tooth out when he got loud with him. They found me his cellmate. I found them all, interviewed every one of them. Lie after lie after lie. There was no gladiator fights with eight inch blades he pulled out of his rectum and stabbed the guy 32 times in one of his stories that he told that never appeared in any of his 302s or never appeared at the trial or never appeared in any of the briefings with the agents, the many thousands of hours of the briefings that he had given to the agents, it never appears anywhere. All of a sudden, all this fiction appears. And you say to yourself, this is a guy that's A, not remorseful, B, he's manipulative, and he's looking for an opportunity. He lied his way to get out of jail. He got a willing agent who was desperate to get a conviction against me because I punished him and destroyed his career, this agent, okay? Spun a tail, helped perjure his testimony, got him out of jail, and yet this is a guy that's not saying, you know what? Whew, I got away with it. No, this is a guy that's looking for another opportunity. He's sizing up his mark. That's all he's doing. And the problem is that you, you're watching his handler permit this. Because you've had complaints from civilians, you've had complaints from uh, five-time Emmy Award-winning uh, journalist Peter, Peter Lance, who was threatened by this guy, okay? And it was all being ignored, all ignored. In the case of John A. Light, he was living right next door to another government cooperator. Now, his FBI handler had to know this. It had to be a violation of his parole, okay? But yet he's living right next door to another individual who by, went by the name, uh, he was, Sean Richards was his name. He was the son-in-law to the Cavacanti uh, family. Uh, he was accused of being the boss, uh, John Riggy. It was his future. It was his, his uh, ex-son-in-law who got caught up in construction frauds and a whole host of crimes, testified against numerous individuals, and he ends up living right next door. He and John A. Light together doing construction jobs together. Okay, that was facilitated by the handlers. Okay, there's no other excuse for it. There's no other way you can explain it.